Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. Uh, thanks for tuning in again. I uh, just want to give a little shout out to all the people down at Thunder Valley that came up and said hello to me and uh, told me how much they're appreciating and enjoying the, the vlog. Uh, we got Robert and Josh and Scott and John and a few other people that I don't recall their names, but um, I'm very, very heartwarmed from the reception that uh, these players have given me and uh, they give me encouragement to do more. So once again, thank you. And for my other subscribers, thank you very much for uh, subscribing and watching. I do appreciate your support. Today at Thunder Valley, I was playing in the 1-3 game and it was an action-packed game. And I did pick up some nice hands and I got most of them cracked. So um, there was one particular player that we had a running joke because every time we got down to heads up between him and I, I just got beat. And he beat me like a, a stepchild. It was, it was painful. But he was a super nice guy and I can't really uh, blame him for the way the hands went down. It's just like when someone's holding over you, they're just holding over you. Reminds me of a uh, vlog that uh, Johnny Vibes did about a month ago where he was playing uh, down in the bigger game, of course. And he was uh, playing with a person on his direct right who basically tortured him all game long and played a very wide range. Uh, there that I was talking about played the same way. Uh, reminds me of Brad Owen's Revenge range chart. He played a lot of hands. It seemed like every time he played one against me, he got there. And when he played one against other people, he did it. I uh, hope you enjoy the vlog. Sit back, enjoy. Here it comes. We sit down in the 1-3 game with 300 in front of us. First hand we play is Queen Jack offsuit. We raise to 12 and we get three callers. So 48 in the pot. Flop comes 10, 9, 7 with two diamonds. The first player leads for $6. It's a pretty small bet here. I decide to raise to 21, trying to get the heads up. Looking to get a free card on the turn if I need to. I figure at least one of my overs is good here, maybe both. Everyone else folds out and now we're heads up. Turn card is a five of spades. Now he just leads out for $100. And I'm figuring he has to have at least two pair here. Maybe he has a straight. Anyway, I can't justify going any further with this hand. So I just have to let it go. I was in the big blind with two tens, button limped, small blind completed. I raised to 16, they both called. Flop comes 883, small blind checks. I bet 25, expecting to take it down here most of the time. Button makes the call for 25 and the small blind folds. Turn card comes as an ace. I'm going to go into check call mode here. Let the person stab at it if they have a weaker hand than tens. They bet 50. I put in the call. River card comes as a deuce of diamonds. I check again and they roll over ace three offsuit. I'm in the big blind with ace king offsuit, uh, button limped, small blind limped. I raised to 25 and both the button and the small blind call. The flop is 974 with two hearts. Small blind checks it to me. I just check it back and it gets checked around. Turn card is a seven. I like my hand a little better here, but it gets checked around again. 
When the river cart comes to the Deuce of Diamonds, the small blind leads out quickly for $30. I think he's just taking a stab at it, so I call. Seat one puts a $7 straddle on. I look down at two jacks and raise to 21. Player in the cutoff calls the 21. The big blind calls the 21. And now the straddler goes ahead and raises the remaining of his stack, which is $68 more for us to call. He's been playing a very wide range. I decide to isolate him by jamming. First player folds. The player in the big blind though thinks for a while. He knows that the player in seat one has been playing a wide range and that I'm isolating him. And he's just trying to figure out whether I'm doing it with a real hand or something less than that. Anyway, after thinking for quite some time, he does decide on a fold. And the player in seat one rolls over pocket queens. The board and run out is no help. So he beats me again. And I uh, double him up. I'm in the hijack with ace-king suited. I put in the raise and uh, my favorite player calls me and we're heads up. He leads into me for $25. I decide to peel one time, which is mistake number one. Turn card comes as a king. I'm feeling pretty good. He assembles a bet for $50 now. And he's been doing a lot of betting with mediocre hands and bottom pair and second pair. And I just told myself, I'm going to take a stand here. He might have some sort of straight draw. So I decided just to jam, which is definitely the wrong thing to do. And he rolls over pocket fours for a set. And I double him up again. After that last hand, I topped off my stack to 400. And here I'm on the button, so an open for a raise to seven. Get a couple callers. I made it 25 with King Jack suited from the button. And we go four ways to the flop. Flop is three, nine, five with two diamonds. It gets checked to me. I decide to play this aggressively. So I bet $50. The big blind folds and now the early raiser to $7 calls off his last $49. Everyone else folds. So I'm happy I'm getting at least $1 back here because I expect to miss this hand nine times out of 10. And sure enough, I did. The player in the uh, seat one makes it a live six. I decided to isolate him by raising with an ace three suited. He calls. Flop comes nine, four, three. He checks to me. I figure he would bet any nine here. So I go ahead and bet with my pair of threes with the back door flush draw. He quickly calls. I'm worried he has a four, but then the four shows up on the uh, turn. So I think I'm still good here. So I'm going to go ahead and bet again, this time for 40. He calls again, and the river card comes as a five. And at this point, I told him I give up because I have no idea what's going on with what he would be calling me with, but I have a feeling he's going to show me the winner. And sure enough, he turns over five, six offsuit. Player in seat one opens for a raise to 12. I call, the player behind me calls, and the big blind calls. Flop comes 5-5 five, five, queen, and it gets checked around. Turn card comes as a 5 of clubs. Now the person leads out for 12. I race to 25. Everybody folds, 
and he says, I know you got me beat, but I'm going to call anyway. River card comes as a seven. He checks again, and I go ahead and bet. And this is the first hand I beat him in all day long. So the very next hand, I look down at two tens, and I open for a raise to 25. I get a player behind me calling to 25, and it comes back around to the player in seat one, and I groaned when he started reaching for his chips, and I said, not again, and he goes, well, I'll let this one go. The flop comes nine, seven, five. I decide to bet big here, so I lead for 40. Player behind me thinks for a while, and he decides to let it go. But the real story is seat one said he had six, eight and would have flopped a straight. I got ace jack of clubs on the button. He got a couple limpers in front of me. I raised to 16, the small blind, big blind, and one of the limpers makes the call. So four ways to the flop. The flop comes eight, three, deuce, with two clubs. This gets checked to me. I bet 30 with my flush draw and two overs. First player folds. Now the big blind goes ahead and puts in the call. The other player folds. Turn card is a seven of diamonds. No help to me, but I decided to try to represent like I had a stronger hand than I do, even though I have the nut flush draw. And I bet $70, which is a mistake. Uh, there's no way if he had any part of that flop that he's folding with a seven on the turn. It doesn't change the board any. And if he was good enough to call me on the flop, he should be good enough to call me on the turn. But he doesn't call me. He puts in the raise to 170. Now I have to put him on a hand at least two pair, probably a set. My pot odds are not quite right. I need 20% equity to make this call. I have about 16.5% equity. But I'm thinking, I'm going to finally make a hand today. I know it. This is it. This is the hand I'm going to make. And the river card comes as a six of hearts. He only has like $9 left. I just call it off just so I can see what his hand was. And he shows a set of threes. The hand immediately following the ace jack. I looked down at ace queen of hearts. I didn't have a chance to buy chips because I was taking notes on the previous hand. So my stack is only $96. I open for a raise to 16. The person in the small blind re-raises to 40. The person in the big blind calls the 40 and it comes back around to me. And with ace queen, I'm just going to have to stick it in here and hope for the best. So I go ahead and jam for $96. I was expecting the person in the small blind to isolate me. If they have a strong hand like I believe they do, they should probably re-raise at this point and force out the big blind. But he decides on a call, which gives the big blind very good odds to come along. So the big blind ends up calling as well. So we're going three ways to the flop. This is a good time to remind you to like and subscribe since the big blind has taken their time in putting in the call. I appreciate your support. I'm hoping to get lucky one time. I have not made a hand in a very long time. 
I've been here for about four hours and I can probably count the hands I've won on one hand. So with 288 in, the flop comes 663. Now the small blind leads out quickly for 75 or for 70. And the big blind quickly folds. If I had more chips, I don't know whether I can play this hand past this point. I know he has a big pair. So I might be lucky that I was short stacked. Anyway, the run out comes seven of clubs and the queen of diamonds on the end and he shows pocket jacks. So I get lucky and win one. I pick up ace queen of hearts on the button and raise to 16. I get two callers. So we go three ways to a flop. Flop is ace five three with one heart. Someone's checked to me. I bet 21 and both players fold. I'm in the cutoff with ace king offsuit race to 16. The small blind puts in the call. He checks in the dark. Flop comes jack four six. I go ahead and continuation bet here for 15 and he puts in the quick call. Turn card comes in the, is another jack. Now he leads for 15 pretty quickly. I have a feeling he doesn't have much here, so I go ahead and call. River card comes as a 10. He leads again for 15. I'm going to call him down with ace high, and he shows ace 7. The first hand we won today was with ace of clubs, king of spades, and the last hand we won today was with ace of clubs, king of spades, both of them with ace high calling down a bluff. Anyway, I don't think I played well at all today. I was a little tilted and frustrated with the way things were running. Uh, player in seat one tortured me today. I gave too much action on some hands. I missed some obvious tells. It's a real disappointment. I would give myself a C minus on my performance today. I really needed to check back that ace jack of clubs on the turn and I needed to fold the ace king of diamonds on the flop for his $25 bet. Thanks for watching. If you are uh, not a subscriber, please hit that button. It does help out the channel and all those thumbs up are appreciated. Um, until next time, take care and uh, hope you run good.